physiotherapist and a strength coach working at Elite Sport and Performance. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the scourge of a lot of my fellow strongman competitors and basically people that lift in the gym in general, it's tennis elbow. Now I've not actually treated anybody in the last two years who has tennis elbow who actually plays tennis. It's mainly a lot of powerlifters, strong men, strong women, then people work in restaurants, people that do a lot of gripping in their job. So today we're going to talk about what it is and how you can help make it a little bit better. So the problem itself starts on the very tip of the elbow and what you have here is you have a very small bony prominence that a, that a lot of muscle mass attaches into via a tendon. So the, ten, the muscles in the forearm that flex um, the wrist are on the inside and the muscles of the forearm that extend the wrist back are on the outside but they both work in kind of unison to close the fist and grip so on any activities where you're doing a lot of force gripping you can load this muscle and obviously load the tendon if you're loading the muscle frequently enough or you're loading it maximally then what you can have what you can cause is a bit of a strain on this tendon or sometimes it can even tear in the past they would have called this a tendonitis but what we've seen from the literature in the last sort of 15 years is that the tendon doesn't just inflame, it also becomes weaker and it deconditions and we call that a tendinosis. If you google that, that means degenerative change in the tendon but don't worry, it's reversible. The whole thing's lumped together and it's called a tendinopathy. So how do we fix it? The first thing you have to consider when you want to try and fix the tennis elbow is that it is a repetitive strain injury. Therefore, if you continue to do the same things that you have been doing that have brought it on in the first place, then that's really not going to work too well for you. So you have to have a think about what activities you have been doing and if there's anything in particular that would have aggravated this. So basically, anything where the elbow's straight and the wrist's an extension or anything where you're doing a lot of force gripping with a palm down is where you're going to really put a lot of maximal load on the tendon. That's why we see it's such a big problem in strongman. That's why you see so many of the strongmen wearing elbow sleeves or these clasps over their forearms to try and get a lot of blood into the area and compress it. So basically if you're doing anything like a heavy axle clean, um, even a squat position, or your benching or overhead press that can all bother the outside of the elbow. Now I'm not saying you need to cut out all these things completely. What we would say is maybe decrease the volume of it. So what I mean by that is if you're training the axle uh, twice a week, maybe just take it down to once a week or then maybe once a fortnight. Give yourself a little bit more time to kind of recover in between. So that's modifying the training load and we've also talked about modifying the activity. So for instance, if you feel that when you're benching, it's sore, but it's better with a reverse bench position, then switch to that. <coughs> you're still getting a training effect from the bench, but you're not doing so much to load the tendon and aggravate it. Modifying the activity really is a massive part of making this problem go away. Too many people come in and they just expect a quick result and want me to wave a magic wand over it. Um, I wish I did have one. If I did, I would be a millionaire. The reality is these conditions don't go away overnight. It's going to take a period of time for this to improve. So you have to be doing everything you can to help speed this on. Okay, next thing you can do then is some local soft tissue work onto the, onto the elbow. So I'm going to demonstrate that today. I'm going to use my spiky ball again. Really, it doesn't matter what one you use. This is a peanut ball. I showed you in one of the last videos. I'm a big fan of this one because the, the spikes on it increase the kind of blood flow into the area. That increases your capillarization, which we want to flush a lot of blood into the tendon and into that area. So this is what we're going to use. Basically what you do, you find the point of tenderness on here and you kind of want to work just slightly below this and take some tension out of the forearm. So the ball's going to go on the front of the forearm, along here, and then you're going to put pressure up against the wall, like so, and you're going to roll this up and down. If you do go on to the point of tenderness where the tendon attaches then don't worry too much but like I say I would just try and work below that. You can also got tennis elbow up here, this is the supracondylar ridge into brachioradialis so you can work up into this point as well and often you'll find a little bit into the front of the bicep here, a little bit uncomfortable too so that's another good point to work into. I would use the soft tissue stuff on a daily basis with light amounts of pressure to begin with and then look to build up. Oh, it's far too early in the morning for this. This is only my first cup of coffee, so apologies for the quality of the content today. It may actually get better as the video goes on. 
Okay, so this is tip two. This is a voodoo band, and no way am I endorsed by Rogue or Mobility Wad for this. However, if they want to send me loads of their products, then that would be fantastic because we would use them in the gym. So what you're going to do with this compression band, and it's also called flossing or voodoo flossing, is you're going to attach this round about the forearm. So I'm going to see if I can do this myself. But really, you want a super cool friend or your physio or your wife or whoever to help you out. And you're just going to do this down the forearm. Moderate compression, although it'll feel really tight. And then there's quite a length of this, so I'm going to come up. I'm going to come round the back of the elbow, around where the tendon attaches. I'm going to clip it in at the back. Okay, so that's my floss on. And then what this is doing is it's compressing down on the tissue. It's flushing all the blood out of here, up distally into the hand. So you see my hand start to swell up. I don't know if you can see that straight away. My forearm's getting thicker uh, below and above. It's pushing all that blood flow out and it's shearing down on the tissues. It's giving compression down on the tissues. So now when I start to mobilize this, so if I turn the palm away towards you, guys, and then lift up and put a, a stretch on this extensor tendon, then what I'm getting, I'm getting a mobilization with movement. So this is compressing this and then I'm flossing this away. So eventually I might get to a point where I can get my palm and palm together, hand to hand, and I'm gonna turn the hand towards me and I'm gonna straighten this out. Now this is really uncomfortable. You may only wanna do this for a minute or two until your hand starts to become a bit numb and sore. And I'm trying to really force my elbow into extension, straighten it out, turn this round. Very subjective, so some people can tolerate longer than others, but that's probably enough. Hand feels quite swollen. I'm changing my capillaries here. I take this off. So you'll see now that this starts to fill back up with blood and that's what's happening. So now that the blood's been pushed out of this area into the hand and above, now that I've taken that off, that's gonna refill, capillary refill back into you. It's gonna flush a lot of fresh blood into this area. Pumping fresh blood into the area is really important when you're trying to heal tissue. When you have an injury and you have that inflammatory phase, you get a lot of inflammatory chemicals kicking about the area. And as much as you want that process to actually happen, you also don't want it to happen for too long. So by increasing the blood flow into the area, you're going to help flush out all these inflammatory chemicals and that's really going to speed up the process. Okay, so we've done two things already. We've used the peanut ball, lacrosse ball to mobilise off the soft tissue. We've used the voodoo floss to pump extra blood into here and just to help uh, mobilise off the elbow joint too. So the last thing we want to introduce to the tendon is loading. This is where a lot of the evidence lies in terms of the other two are really good for calming the symptoms down. If you want to get the elbow back to 100% then you have to load it. But it's a graded loading programme that we're after. We don't want to be pushing into too much pain because all that can do is, is set you back. So my third piece of apparatus today is just a resistance band um, and I'm going to demo the exercise with this. If you stand on the band and you keep your elbow bent in by your side, like so, you can rest this on a table if you want. Then what you're going to do is you're going to extend the wrist while keeping the elbow tucked in by your side and then you're going to control it back down. So you can extend the wrist up control back down, extend the wrist up, control back down. If you found that that was too difficult to do and the band was still super light, then what you can do is you can help it up with your good hand, control it down. To progress that, you do it with a straight arm, so the wrist's in uh, flexion, you take it up into extension, control down, extend up, control down. Like I say, this band is actually got a fair amount of resistance in it, for the, for the width of it, so you need to pick your bands uh, sensibly. So if you are struggling with tennis elbow or lateral elbow pain, try those three tips that I've shown you today. Sometimes your elbow pain can be really stubborn and it may not improve with these tips that I've given you. If that's the case, make sure you go and see a physio 
or your GP for a proper assessment and some other management because there are other things you can do to you can do soft tissue massage into here, acupuncture, um, there's a whole variation of other soft tissue modalities, cupping, uh, electrotherapy, if it really comes down to it, it's not shifting then a corticosteroid injection can sometimes be useful to dampen down any neurogenic inflammation in the tendon. Well I hope you found that useful folks, let me know how you got on with your tennis elbow problems, just comment in the section below, like the video, if you like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking here and watch our latest video by clicking here. See you next time.